been looking off key When my baby snuggles up to me in the moonlight on the front porch swing Man, that's living to me I, I don't think the way I used to Oh, life don't feel so great Biscuits baking in the oven Daddy gets a little bit of love Singing a good looking off key When my baby snuggles up to me In the moonlight on the front porch swing Man, that's living to me Trading my suit and tie for my old blue jeans Yeah, five o'clock I'm ready For the simple thing like smelling mama's biscuits baking in the oven Daddy gets a little bit loving Singing a good looking off key When my baby snuggles up to me in the moonlight On the front porch swing Man, that's living to me When my baby snuggles up to me in the moonlight On the front porch swing Man, that's living to me Patreons, you just got a very special intro. I'm sure when the video came on, you all were going, wait a minute, what's there's this? A lot, there's, there's a wrong, lot going on. It's the wrong show. It's, and it's not the wrong show. Welcome no. to On the Trail with Kevin and Scott. I'm yes. Kevin, the engineer, the tech guy, you know, the one who uh, typically reads instructions, uses the right tools, and follows those instructions, and you are? I'm Scott. I'm the slapstick parts guy trying to follow Kevin while he reads the instructions, and they sit there and you put about eight or six, seven little, little, little doodads together to make sure a light comes on while we're testing stuff on that. But other than that, while we will share with you what worked, as well as what didn't, it's always up to you guys to uh, please read the instructions, do your research, and follow those instructions. Yes. And I a almost different right. order there, just right. And of course, we have a very, very special guest here today, and not in the studio, but in his garage. Welcome to John Carl. Hi, everybody. <laughs> I'm the guy that sits here and talks to the people that look at the things that do the doodads with the guy that knows what he's doing, and the other guy that's figuring out exactly what's going on when that diode changes that light to make things work. But then I'm the guy with the jokes. That's true. <laughs> you two are doing all that. anymore. <laughs> I, I, I am in real trouble uh, on this show, folks. Uh, we're here at John's, and John uh, has had me come over a few times. But before that, he even has been on the show before. Yes. Now, those of you who are astute listeners mm -hmm. and rewind back, I believe it's three years. Four years. It was one of our first shows. Four years ago at Halloween when we did the zombie garage. John was the guy running around outside Halloween night collecting zombies and feeding them to the chipper <laughs> shredder. They, they, they were plentiful. They were. They were. He was also a little messy on feeding, so occasionally <laughs> we did get a few facefuls of zombie goop. grindings. Goop. <laughs> um, but we're really here because John, despite his evident country music skills, which I'm very impressed with. Um, and, uh, you know, if you want to check him out online, he's got a website, uh, you have a Facebook page, yeah, um, YouTube videos. It hasn't been updated in a while, but johncarl.net, J-O-H-N-K-A-R-L.net. <laughs> right. J-K. Yeah. As Jeepers, you really ought to be able to re remember those two initials. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now, now, the people that are watching can see, but not only is what Kevin all just said with big words, but um, <laughs> you, the beautiful backdrop. I mean, I mean, I mean, and I remember the light this time, guys, we're not doing this with a handheld flashlight, right. is uh, you're obviously an avid jeeper, you know, yes. and especially this right here, this lovable Smojack, I love because that's some old iron, man. Yeah, that's a that's a beautiful, uh, technically a CJ painted up like a... Uh, like an MB. MB. Yes. Um, and we're going to get into depth on that very shortly, but not to be, you know, completely overshadowed. On the other side, mm -hmm. we've got his... 
Just JK. JK, yeah. JK. And, yeah. and to 2018. This was literally the last one on the shelf before the JLs. JLs. Yeah. So uh, this begs us to lead off with our first question for you, sir. Yes. What got you into Jeeps? My wife. Really? Wow. <laughs> you weren't expecting that. Oh, no. no, no. See, you guys were all thinking that it was, oh, you did something a little more. Actually, it was very simple. <laughs> we moved to Florida. Mm -hmm. My wife had always had the dream of a Jeep mm -hmm. and going out by the water and sitting in her Jeep, which, of course, here on Tam in Tampa, it's not a lot of places you can do that like you can in Daytona on the other side. Correct. But... Unless you go back to the Redneck Riviera. Correct. Which oh. it really isn't the Gulf. <laughs> and uh, Fort DeSoto Beach. Right before you get to the inlets, uh -huh. there's a small little beach you can pull your Jeep up on and mm -hmm. look at the Skyway Bridge and it gets with the lights on. I'm actually going to bring my tel uh, telescope out there probably when it gets cooler and not so many mosquitoes and sweat. At nighttime, right? At nighttime, yes. <laughs> okay. Oh, let the gators nibble on, on your others. toes. So, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, Scott does have interesting hobbies sometimes. Well, that's okay. We all do. <laughs> Doesn't make so, us bad people. <laughs> often <laughs> much yeah <laughs> so on to more safe topics uh, <laughs> topics like jeeps so tell us a little bit about the uh, the willies and the acquisition or the cj willies or whatever you want to call sure. it and is this your first jeep it, it is my first old jeep okay uh our first jeep was a 2016 jku mm -hmm. just like everybody else uh we had purchased it and we were like hmm what do we do now? <laughs> and we heard about, of course, Tampa Jeep Crew. Okay. So we, we, my wife actually forced me to go to a meetup because that was not my thing. I, I had no thought of. Is going. that the cattle prod charging over yes, there in the counter? Yes, okay, yes. Yeah. No, that's next to the fly swatter. Go outside. Uh, have fun. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we went and uh, we actually met uh, Eric Pence from okay. Zombie Garage, yeah. and yeah. he was the uh, nicest guy, introduced us to everybody, and, and we made lifetime friends that are still friends with us now, uh, today, that we'll talk all every week and help each other out, stuff like that. I mean, we're there whether it has to do with Jeeps or cars or houses or families or anything. So um, that, that changed my life. Yeah. Uh, jeeping seriously changed my, my perspective on, on Florida, on, on people. Yeah. With everything going on, of course, for the past couple of years. Oh, yeah. So this thing is a 1951 CJ3A. Yep. They had uh, uh, two models before this uh, when it comes to the civilian mm -hmm. versions of this vehicle. Finger quotations. Yes. And they <clears> also <throat> had two different sides. You had the Ford side and you had the Willys uh, uh, Kaiser side. All right. Yes. So... This was a farm Jeep. It was red originally, we found out, when I scraped paint off of it. <laughs> mm -hmm. It uh, uh, lived on a farm its entire life until it got to Zombie Garage and then to me. Um, the original owner, uh, this gentleman in Georgia, who used it on his farm his whole life, taught his kids how to drive on it. Um, when I received it, it was because... Uh, uh, a friend of mine, Jeff Lowe, had actually purchased this in Georgia. Uh, him and Dave and Donald, I think, drove up with a trailer to pick it up. I think I recall him posting about yeah. that. And they were all excited about it, brought it back, and it was going to be the project that we were all going to work on together. And then life happened. And yeah. none of us could really meet that much. Uh, we were going to do it once a week. It just didn't happen. And it sat for about two years, maybe a year and a half, two years. And it made me sad, so I kept saying to Jeff, Hey, you ready to sell that thing yet? <laughs> hey, what are you thinking? What are you? And one day we were talking on the phone. He goes, Hey, I'm ready to get rid of it. If you want it, let's work it out. And they, they towed it over here, flat towed it with the, mm -hmm. the tow hitch, and put it in here, and nothing worked. It <laughs> um, was a block. <laughs> there was a uh, the air oil canister. Um, so there this was, was this really pump. was a Jeep kit, some assembly required. This is lots of assembly acquired, and it was filled with farm mud. When people in Florida, if you know, there there is different kinds of farm mud. There is sugar sand, yep, and there is dung. Okay, I was getting ready to start taking the pictures. I didn't have to bleep something. Yeah. So, oh no, I'll I'll stay sanely. <laughs> PG. Maybe. Family Maybe. friendly. <laughs> I'll have my phone on standby. <laughs> my That's radio it. time is on. Hey. <laughs> but no, uh, so it's it was a lot of cleaning out. And even now I can go under there and I'll find something that a chunk will fall the size of, of my head and probably just miss me. Yeah, that wasn't sheet metal. That was just 50-year-old solidified cow byproduct. Yeah. Yes, yes. You didn't find a, a, tr a Teamsters Union uh, wristwatch in there, did you? No, but I found okay. a fink. Never mind. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh yeah. Yep. 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 Well, he's done a remarkable job on it, and there, there's a few things. It's got one modern convenience. He's he's popped a Pertronics distributor in it because he was more afraid of points, but turns out the Pertronics has been a bit of a challenge. <laughs> yeah, it's been a problem too. Yeah, the the Jeep I think rejected anything later than 1955. <laughs> uh, well, the cool part about it was so so there's why uh, Kaiser Willie is is still a website and a, and a company to right. buy parts from. Yeah, and they get a lot of rebuilt parts, or they'll get parts from other people, have them rebuilt. So they're still original parts, but there's also other companies. There's one in Indiana, uh, Nashville, Indiana, that I found that actually goes and buys warehouses filled with old Jeeps. Hmm. And the old crated Jeeps, some of them are dented, so they take them apart and they sell the parts off of them. And, wow. and NOS, so new old stock. For example, the fenders, the front fenders on this were so rotten that they had metal banding that he welded on to hold them there. Mm. And if you touched them, your finger would go right through. So I, I took them off right away, started working on this with my seven-year-old son uh, right before COVID hit. And with COVID hitting, of course, it made it my daily project because I needed something to keep myself sane. Yeah. And anytime I had to order a part, I ordered from them because I knew it would be a 1951 original part. So this thing is all original. Except for the 12 volts that I've put in, and mm -hmm. all the lighting is now LED. The wiring is all brand new. That's okay. You finally got the current draw down to something the original system could handle. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, we have. Uh -huh. But it's been a labor of love. It's, it, it's not perfect. The frame is magnificent. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's why I decided to take the time and, and work on the body work. I had a, uh, a friend of mine from New York came down for a vacation in the beginning of March, right when COVID had hit, and they started shutting everything. He was on a plane ride down. And uh, he helped me all week. I took the week off, and we cut panels out, and we put metal. And his name's Kim Kaiser. He actually has a 1932 Willys. Wow. And uh, it's, it's, it's beautiful. beautiful. Wood frame on that thing. <laughs> Believe well, and that's one of the crazy things because, like, uh, not only, again, you are a OTT original alumni in a way, so is Dave Meyer, and he's got the wagon. Yep. Yeah, what year is that wagon? I can, I can never remember. I think it's a 62 or 63. Yeah, 60 yeah. something. So there's a lot of old iron. Yeah, in the and, group. and that's the thing because Dave and I were talking about that the other day, is uh, probably a week or a week or two ago, that all the all the people that were modifying the heck out of their JKs, which which my old JK was Coastal Mayhem. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people knew the Jeep. Actually, the owner that bought it still has a sticker on it, has not changed it, and it has been over a year. So he must <laughs> like the name, too. I don't know. Yeah. But um, I, I did all the work on that, too. Yeah. I did all the lift. I did all the all the, the special brakes. The, the, the sound system, of course, was incredible in that thing. Um, every custom mod to it between... between uh, 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 drive shafts and rails and, 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 and control arms and now I was like okay well let's get to the old iron and that's what Dave and I are talking about is, is it, all these people that put all this money into those Jeeps are now getting into the old stuff because mm -hmm. you get to see how it started mm -hmm. yeah. you get to bring back history I mean this thing would have went in a junk pile somewhere yeah, now it drives, it rides, it's titled <clears> which <throat> brings the value up because it's legal yep yeah, and I can literally put the nut that it goes very fast. We get up to forty-three miles an hour with whoa, the three yeah, of us. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Let, I have to say something, man. Again, me and you were talking a little bit before the show about how you know everyone downplays it. Don't get a forest loan. Don't do for a what math? Oh my goodness, seventy-year-old Jeep. Yeah. They, she's she's got some get them go. Yeah, she does. She yeah, does. she's got some some movement, especially with with my um, <clears throat> large posterior in the back. Well, well, it's marked on the engine sixty horsepower or large posterior in the back. <laughs> <laughs> what was funny is we were trying to find a noise, and I guess we couldn't find the noise to work. So you, you know, I, don't, I still don't know if John was joking. You got to get out, Scott. You know, got to walk home. I got to make this noise happen for <laughs> Kevin. Make it happen. <laughs> no, there's uh, the joys of an old vehicle, um, yeah. and uh, but it is kind of odd how we we do tend to come back to the basics. Yeah. Um, and 60 horse is more than enough to motivate something that is barely 2,000 pounds. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and with that wonderful rigid suspension the front shackles are not even h shaped they're c, they're c shaped which yes. means they're real stable <laughs> you know <laughs> um 
Kevin's doing the Pac-Man yeah, with Pac-Man his hand as we go. Uh, I'm not sure I'd want to have enough horsepower to get much above. No, that. no. There, there are actually people out there with these that have put LS motors in them. I know. That's just and it's very scary. It is. You know, I, I'm sorry. Like to about like going going backwards in technology. We went from the JK back to an LJ for us. I like the idea of you know this is not helping me by the way because Ke- <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, Kevin knows like I, I, I'm liquidating and, and trying to buy a house, and I'm looking at this going, you know, It'll no look good at the house. Well, the problem is I can't because I'd have to borrow Kevin's trailer and truck to bring it back, and he'll say no. <laughs> not at all. Look, you just put it right on the ball and you pull it with you. I made it simple. As yeah. long as the wheels turn, otherwise you no, by no, the no. time you get home from Wait. Georgia, it's ground itself down to just a hood and a grill. I mean, hood and a windshield. I don't even have to do that now because now I have the Gladiator. I can just rent the trailer from U-Haul now. Yeah, but I'm still you, not going to do U-Hauls it. U-Hauls and Jeeps, you know, they usually won't let you rent them. Well, I will oh, say this. Oh, that's right. Though. I forgot no, no, about that. They will with the Gladiator. I know. No, I know, but sorry. I, I will say, though, it, when I do get the house, though, yeah. and I do get a flat fender Jeep or something old iron, I can tell you right now, I'm going to do the John Carl modification in my garage. Because right now, we don't have a wood chipper going on because this man, like, literally saws out holes in his roof to make air conditioning in the garage. Tied into the air conditioning. Duct. John, you are my hero. <laughs> This fat kid right now is thanking you. I just wish that I was smart enough when I was working on this <laughs> to <laughs> cut holes in the ceiling and put air conditioning in, not after the fact. I did it just for you. Okay, thank you. We'll, we'll, we'll edit that out in post. Guys, he, wink, wink, did it at the beginning. <laughs> Poor Kevin. Now, there is one thing that he made as a modification to uh, Smojack. That's what he calls it with the, the code on that thing. And there's a whole story behind that, but that's not suitable for mixed company. So, so we'll let that go. So unmix fi- yourself and we'll tell you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Fine by the FCC. But <laughs> obviously, he has a <clears throat> somewhat of a uh, hankering for music. <laughs> and this particular Jeep did not come with an optional radio, speaker, or any other Roof. form of... In- <laughs> oh, that too. So, for those who are on Patreon, if you look behind his elbow, you see some neat little boxes. Some Right now they're marked with a Red Cross. Some days oh. they're marked with ammo. Some days they're yeah, marked right. with biohazards. Cupcake uh, factory. Yeah. Whatever. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, John cunningly hid a really awesome stereo system and a uh, uh, set of impressive speakers. For <laughs> I, I swear he could run out of gas, run the stereo on the battery, and just face them backwards, and you could probably get home at about 30 miles an hour. <laughs> you know? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, it, it, is so, it is the epitome of stealth. I can tell you right now, you know, he's sitting there jamming his music, and all of a sudden everyone's looking around for the car or the truck. What the heck? Yeah, yeah, where's, that, where's that coming from? Where's that coming from? It couldn't be coming from the old Jeep with the yeah. canvas bags there's, on the there's back. There's not even a radio in the dash. <laughs> with it. I did tell him, though, that the best thing he needs to do is get the soundtrack to Bill Murray's uh, <laughs> uh, Stripes. Stripes, you know, yeah. and, and do the the, the boom shakalaka march music as he's driving down the road. Get everybody's well, the attention. only thing it's missing right now is the uh, the 50 cal on the top. Oh, so I'm, I'm AKA, actually uh, I'm going to actually build a a rat patrol Mac, uh, you know, a, a fake version that yeah. I can screw in and put on for parades and stuff. And that's the main reason I, I, I so two reasons I built it, three reasons: time with my family. So with mm-hmm. my son, who's helped me once, but he's seven, so you can understand. <laughs> yeah, but he um, still yeah, shouts yeah. when dad comes down yeah. the street. He's, he's the coolest kid in the neighborhood, though. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's we, right. We came back, they're all, they're all waving. <laughs> um, my dad also would come over. They just moved here from New York about a year ago. So while I was yeah. building it, he'd come over on Wednesdays before COVID, and we'd talk and stuff. And his his father, so my grandfather, owned garages back in Albany, so he's been around cars his whole life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that was nice. Uh, good three, uh, three generations working on it. Um, I also got it because I want to wheel it. Yeah. I want to bring this out where everyone's, and I know Citrus now, you can get a badge for an area I have wheeled so many times. <laughs> Same here. Ridiculously. I'm, I'm going to take this up there, just, and I'm going to get my badge to prove that this is as good as a four-inch suspension you know with control arms. Let me know when you do, because if, if a push comes to shove, I'm being sincere here. Yeah. We want to bring the Gladiator to get the same trail. Yeah. So just in case, we'll be the, we'll be the uh, rescue unit. I, I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. so that well, they, plus you, so he plus can rescue the the gladiator. gladiator. <laughs> yeah, so he can rescue the gladiator. Yes. Well, yeah, I've, I've got the original winch actually up over there that ah. I have rebuilt. I just have not put the plate on to put it on the front of this. Holy cats! I didn't see that. I rebuilt the whole thing because it was uh, a rat's nest of wires. It's literally the little green thing sticking out at yeah. you next to the. Uh, oh. Yeah, the, it looks like a sprinkler oh. head. Okay, I, I was uh, looking for the old uh, five thousand pounds with the big clutch worn, you know, and it's this. Yeah, it's oh. this little. Yeah. Well, okay, quick question because yeah. I see it a lot, and I think both of you will answer this because I know you're on the forums right now. 
the rope. Now, is that to protect when you bump something, or is that in a snatch line? Originally, that was a snatch line. Yeah, that's okay. what they used that for. Um, Got to remember when you were on the on the Burma trails, the mud and the and then yep. the sand, and something to to be pulled out with or to pull out. Okay. Yep. Uh, that that for me is looks. Because I just want this to look like oh, it looks actual cool. Jeep. Thank you. Yeah. And that's why the winch is going to go back on, so it's functionality. So yes. I, I did build this in mind for for the trails, but the last thing that I wanted with it is parades. Mm. Yeah. Stuff like this, especially in today's climate, mm-hmm. political climate, mm-hmm. needs to be brought to light <clears throat> for people to remember and see what we all fought for yeah. what we what we what we know. can do when we all work in the same direction yes, yes. i mean this this is history what? and and my dad was a high school history teacher his whole life and awesome. for once i feel like i have something on him which <laughs> because i have physical history in my garage that, that's that what i said when i got did out. with my own two hands and that's the, that's the coolest part to me is, yeah. is i got to bring something back that, that you know, the, these vehicles save so many people's lives and help give us our freedoms. That yeah, well, that, that's, awesome. that's the thing. It, it was, um, I had the notes, but one of the generals, you know, it's one of the, the top ten things that helped win the war. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, and it, the really cool, and I actually said the same comment when I jumped out of the back end, you know, is that, you know, and again, I'm kind of trying to be dainty with the getting it out, you know, my big frame and all that, and you, you both are like, why? <laughs> this thing's been through you know what. I mean, yeah. You ain't going to hurt it, Scott. Yeah. But I, 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 I had an ear-to-ear grin. I even videoed it because... I, I have now ridden in a piece of history. And yeah. I helped a friend, uh, you know, again, a 55 Plymouth Belvedere. That was a pretty cool car. Yeah. But it wasn't this. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? This thing's awesome. It's, it's absolutely fantastic. So, and to know and, you and, did, and yeah. I will say this uh, uh, for everyone that watches the show, and you don't know <laughs> if it's a tagline or not in the, in the beginning of the show. Kevin is is ninety five percent the reason why this thing is running. I don't know. I, I got it built and I got it to the point where I was like, okay, great. Now what? <laughs> and I, I knew you, you, I knew no, Kevin wanted to see it, be a part of it, and we found the two small problems. Yeah. In about an hour, hour and a half. And okay, taking the starter out five thousand times. But besides that, I we literally pushed it after we got after we put yeah. the, had the plugs wired properly. We pushed it once and boom, right up. It rolled. And it hadn't ran for over fifteen years at that point. It was awesome. I sh- we should have made one of those will it run videos, but yeah, it, it I amazing. had no clue if it would have run. <laughs> it was a great feeling. Well, and that's one of the things I always kind of talk about. And actually, well, I wanted to bring up an earlier show, but you kind of. It's very interesting because, in a way, Kevin and I kind of briefly touched about like being afraid to make mistakes, just just doing it. You know, we mean you talked about wrapping jeeps. Yeah. I just want to do it. You know, I'm at the point now where I'm like, you know what, I want to do it. Am I going to fail? Probably, but you know what though? What if it comes out looking awesome? This is a case of, yep. yes, you made you mis- you made a few mistakes, but you got your hands dirty. You just said, you know, what? I'm a, by hook or by crook, I'm going to make this thing work. And that's exactly what I told my dad because he goes, I would never have the cojones to do something like this. I said, why? It's just metal. It's just I metal, can make wires. another piece or buy another mm-hmm. piece or it, I can put it back the way it was. The point is learning why does it work? Yep. How does it work? Mm-hmm. So that the next person that has an issue can say hey john how did you do this how did you make it work? what did you what what did you figure out with this problem because there are plenty of things i did on this jeep that that i would never have done the way that i did because i wound up changing them to the right way after mm-hmm. and perfect example is the steering column and worm gear mm-hmm. to take that out <laughs> you have to remove the whole front end of the vehicle right the whole front end you i'm do. talking fenders everything in the way from the gas line the grill and everything not- and pull it out and through and then when you take it apart the the, the bearings inside have to fit in such a way that it's easy if you just turn it wrong they all just pile on out yep there's nothing holding them in place they're literally it's a worm gear they're just going through that little channel it's and a recirculating it was, worm it was, gear system fully it was manual crazy it doesn't even have steering fluid it has a grease zerk fitting on top of the steering box you have to grease the steering and box. it's not supposed to be grease i'm using grease because yeah. i'm lazy it's supposed to be like the 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 oil that i have in the transmission yeah is what's gear supposed oil. to go in there gear oil 7590 gear oil 
probably I'm using grease it was because straight. I'm just that you know, guy. Kevin. I, I made this working. I made this joke a thousand times. Is that I'm always worried about when I do something, the one little piece goes ding off into the stratosphere, never to be found again. Yeah. So note to self: if I buy one and rebuild the steering, Kevin, <laughs> I need an adult. You know what you need? A catch it, pan, because I'm going to do a it. A magnetic catch pan. Yes. Yeah. A, a floor mat that's a magnet, so it goes rather. It can go ting, and then you hear. I have one. Dory gave me one. It's a, it's a mat they use for surgery. It has a thousand magnets in it for just that reason. Yeah, well, I'm talking about one that's probably, you know, Jeep size. So it's going to have to be about size 10 of the feet garage. by. Oh, no, I have to have over- overalls, too, because I'm going to drop everything. <laughs> oh, I can hear it now. I'm going to get this scratchy phone call, you know, do the interface. I'm stuck to the Jeep. Can you come pry me off? <laughs> no, I'll use my catchphrase. I need an adult. <laughs> so... You know, for the for the tech guys, what was the most challenging part of the build? Was it the steering, or was there something else that was really uh, vexing? The brakes. The brakes. The brakes. The brakes. Those are important. They are. Uh, so, so early I had, hydraulics. I had heard so many stories of doing this that I have to change it to discs. Have to change it to discs. There's no question. And when they change it, the fronts actually become a geometro. That's where you get the discs <laughs> the from, parts. and they, they they turn them for that uh, for your hubs. But no, seriously, the brakes were the biggest issue, and it was a geometro. But uh, <laughs> and I'm uh, I, for the Patreons, I'm looking at the camera going no. <laughs> but but for for all honesty, stake. Then I started talking to a bunch of these old timers that use these in the war, and said these can stop on a dime. Yeah. If you do it right, they stop on a dime. It was impressive with the three of us coming yeah. to a stop. Mm-hmm. Plus also, it's what, 2,000 pounds, if yeah. that? Right. Yeah, but you had the three so, of us. So when, yeah. when people put these together, they really have to pay attention to what master cylinder they use, what wheel cylinders they use, the size of the pad. So you can get the normal 9-inch pad, or you can get the 11-inch pad. So the 9-inch pad is the 9 inches, the big one, and it's got a 7-inch that comes to the small side. So on the vehicle, if you're looking forward on every wheel, yep. not front <laughs> to back, every wheel, the front has a big 9-inch pad, and the back side of that same wheel has a 7-inch pad. So they kind of mm-hmm. oversect. Most people take them and they say, oh, okay, I'll take the two big pads and put them both in the back and just the small ones in the front. Your stopping power is in the front on these things. Yes, I don't want a little seven inch pad stopping me the whole entire way. <laughs> but then the 11 inch pads is an 11 and a nine and they overheat a lot. So they lock up. So when I was doing all the research on this, I said, look, just normal brakes, get new wheel cylinders, don't replace the guts of them. Get real wheel, wheel cylinders because mm-hmm. people will make the mistake and put the same wheel and cylinder on all four. It's not. There's different ones for front and back. People don't do the research. Yeah. So I argued with this Jeep for about four months with the brakes because I didn't do all that research. And I'd fix a part or order a part. All the brake lines in here are braided lines that I paid nice dollars for just yeah. because I was fed up with everything <laughs> not going. It's got to be leaking from somewhere. I went through three master cylinders to find out it wasn't the master, master cylinder. cylinder. Yeah, we just had that discussion today that, you know, folks, this, this is a tech thing we've never covered on the show because normally you go to a guy like Scott and you get the parts. You don't have to figure things out. The manufacturer's done all the homework. Yeah. Or if you get a brake system, like a big brake conversion, they've done the, the calcs. But you have this problem. You have a little hydraulic pump, okay? It's just like a bicycle pump. It just pumps oil. And when you push one stroke, it only pushes so many cc's of fluid or yeah. cubic inches. And if your wheel cylinders take more cc's than that little pump can stroke, guess what? No you brakes. got no brakes. <laughs> yeah, or you empty your wheel, your uh, reservoir every time you hit the brakes. <laughs> well, no, you, you, you start pumping furiously. And I do recall visiting you one time where, yes. where <laughs> I got brakes. I just kind of have to go bum, 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 squeak. <laughs> oh, see, it stops. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was scary for me, too. And um, that's <laughs> why there's no upholstery in the Jeep. <laughs> Kevin, were you wearing your brown pants that day? (laughs) They didn't start that way. (laughs) No, the good news is you can always just jump out and run the other way. That's right. (laughs) It doesn't get up to that kind of speed. (laughs) So, yeah. Yeah, hey, Scott, drag your foot. We need to stop. (laughs) (laughs) You're the anchor. What? Maybe that's why there were so many holes in these four plans. (laughs) Put your foot down. No, not too hard. (laughs) Flintstones. You know, what, what do you have, sneakers or boots on? Oh, yeah, this is a boot day, boy. <laughs> <laughs> 
So I see you went ahead and, and did a little retro work with the uni, uh, unidirectional mill type tires, military tires. Yep. Um, Wanted to make sure that it was as close as, so I, everything that was done on here, the only thing, let me rephrase this, the only thing I have not touched on this Jeep, mm -hmm. knock on wood, you're holding a big chunk. I of know, it. but I don't want to. <laughs> yeah. You don't want to hurt the Hello? guitar. <laughs> the guy inside will get mad. Oh. Um, <laughs> the guy turned the crank. The, the, um, the, the only things I haven't changed are the transmission and the transfer case. Gotcha. Other than and the and inside the disc, the actual gears, um, they've all been cleaned out, flushed, new oil seals well, let's throughout. See, the, the transmission so the suspension's has been done. The oil's been done. The gas has been done. Mm. The tires, the brakes, the bearings, the shocks, the whole motor rebuild. Body work. Um, the body work, which is not perfect, but you know what? I wanted it to look military like it had been used. You want to look used. It's a lot better than it was. Let me put it that way. <laughs> uh, the glass is actually original 1951 glass from another windshield that came with this. Because mm. wow. the windshield that I had on there had a huge you know, spider crack throughout the whole thing. I do see you got the deluxe model, though. Oh, yes. Yeah, he even has the air conditioning still yeah, going. Yeah, the air conditioning model. I yeah. can't reach it, but it's there. Air conditioning. Yep, there you go. Very important. <laughs> and you really feel that when you're driving. It's oh, amazing. Yeah. <laughs> now, do we call that the cat flap or what? <laughs> In different language, yes. <laughs> if you just recently watched uh, the uh, George of the Jungle with Brendan Fraser, the butt flap. <laughs> well, that's if you're going backwards. <laughs> you know, they had something with those old-timey pajamas with the buttons in the back. Moving on. Yes. <laughs> and then, of course, in case it rains, <laughs> you, you get a, one you windshield wiper <laughs> so you can see at least out the window as you can't see in front of the window. Well, hey, <laughs> hey, hey. So they got the AC. They just got the one side of the wiper, you know? Right. The money was well spent. And the old wiper, so it was kind of neat. So it did have the original wiper system. So the way those wipers worked, they were vacuums. Yes. So um, the line would actually run down, and you can't really see it, but yeah. it comes down here, it goes in the engine, and it would actually connect into the exhaust, the top of the exhaust. Really? The vacuum side of the exhaust. Okay. And it would actually pull and push that little flapper inside right. that would move the, the wiper. Well, I wanted it to look original because I did have the part. I took it all the way apart. The leather inside was completely destroyed. <laughs> a lot of the guts were gone. So I bought an electric version, you know, just a newer version because everything's 12 volt now. And it works perfect. And it looks like it's supposed to. But once again, it doesn't really help when the rain's actually falling in your face. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Is not quite enough lean in that windshield to have a dry zone in there, yeah. so you, you you travel with a rag and just you know or a squeegee. It's it's made for it's made for everything. I, I, I mean, had, even the radio system is all marine and the box is all waterproof, so it doesn't matter. I had the YJ Jeep squeegee when I had uh, three months of no soft top. Yeah. yeah. No, it's it's an awesome awesome Jeep. It's, it's absolutely. Uh, I don't know. It, it's really a, a just a fun. It's been a, a fun really project. Cool project. And this is one of those situations where the Jeep actually does reflect the owner because there's a lot of history in this Jeep and a lot of history with you, John, which yeah. is re really cool. Thanks. But um, do you want to take a quick little commercial break there, Mr. Uh, Kim? Yep. Let's do that. Right, we'll be right back after this. That's all, folks. Hold on. Well, Scott's back to normal. <laughs> Hey, Patreons, it's Scott here. Just wanted to say thank you again for all of your uh, contributions. Also, don't forget to check out the 4x4 Radio Network. And also, too, check out our website at onthetrailpodcast.com for really cool stuff. And back to the show. Ooh, the yeah. pearl, too. Yeah, I had a Ludwig Vista light. Nice. Um, John Bonham Snappy. style. Mm. 28 inch hey, base. Patreons, uh, sorry, we had a slight uh, battery, <coughs> so we had to charge the camera for a bit because somebody forgot to bring the spare batteries. And now let's try that with audio recording. No, that was going to record on the audio, so that's fine. That patches through to that. Ah, it's okay. this is now. So okay, so now are we ready to get back at this? Yes, we are. And you're ready for me to redo? Hey, Jeeples. Uh, just a quick... Uh, have a flub. Flatulent giraffe. Tails from the garage. Ron. Yeah, I, yeah I, I've just got to get the, the brain back in a different gear. That's it's all. my fault. I apologize. It's not yours. I apologize. I'd rather sit here and listen to him play guitar. <laughs> but, uh, I'm really good. 
no crap, he really is good. <laughs> Yeah, it's impressive. And of course, the fact that I do listen primarily to country and a little bit old rock, uh, yeah, it's kind of been a great day. Hey, Jeeples, Kevin here. Uh, time to go back to a little bit older segment that we've done in the past and, and uh, going to do it again because I got a call from one of our shop friends, uh, Ron yep. at Red Scorpion Fab Works. And he said, you got to come here. I got to show you a tip from the shop. He says, and, and you need to know this. And he's more, more specifically, he's like, get over here and I'll show you and you, you can decide. And he's absolutely right. Particularly any of you out there that have a JL mm -hmm. or a Gladiator, yes. like somebody here. <laughs> uh, and it's one of these. He, he uh, There was a JL in the shop and Ron was looking a little more uh, haggard than his usual look. Uh, his shop doesn't have air conditioning, folks, and we've had heat indexes of 110 plus. So I don't know that problem. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but uh, anyhow, he uh, he says, "Go ahead." The owner was there, a young lady. I said, he said, "Put the put the the JL in neutral and try and move it." And uh, you weren't moving that thing. It yeah. was not turning. And I said, "What'd you do? You break the transmission?" He goes, "No, I didn't break any. I haven't touched it yet." I said, so what is it? And he says, there is a no roll away safety on that eight speed transmission, which mm -hmm. when I mentioned to Scott earlier, he goes, oh yeah, that's just like my cha charger. Yeah. Uh, like, um, so here's a service bulletin to any of you with an automatic JL or Gladiator. And if you find yourself in a situation, nice one <laughs> punching the microphone. A sun chop. <laughs> Okay, karate chop the key again. <laughs> uh, that's an inside joke, folks. Uh, sorry, Eric. We owe you one. Yeah, we do. Uh, um, <clears throat> but uh, it seems that Chrysler has put an electronic or maybe just electrical solenoid lock on the transmission in park. And so if, A, your battery goes dead, both of them, for the auto start and the other one, yeah. or B, you break down in such a way that you have no power or no key, you cannot manually, or at least apparently, you can't manually put the thing in neutral to move it. Yeah. So if you go out to the parking lot and your gladiator has got a dead battery and you want to push it back out to get it jumped, not going to happen. No. All right. There is a solution. And I was surprised because uh, it's been out there, but it's not really been well publicized. Um so I'm kind of surprised, and we actually dug through the service manual of the Jeep, and it's in there. Yeah. It's way buried down in, under transmission, you know. It's way buried down there by the, other, yeah. the Ch Ch Chattahoochee. I can't yeah. get that word out. Damn it. <laughs> My joke was terrible. <laughs> so, anyhow, if you do find yourself in that situation where yeah. your Jeep is dead and you need to move it off the trail, trail, push it out of a parking lot, get it put up on a flatbed. Mm -hmm. You really don't want to drag it with the wheels locked. <laughs> That's not real good. Um, it's actually very simple. Yeah. So you think they would have made a little more information about it. Maybe giving you a little bit of training at the dealership when you picked it up. You know. Caw. <laughs> uh, so on your transmission shifter area, right where it rolls up underneath the dash, so the front side of that transmission um, shifter console, Console, where the T-handle goes to from park neutral, drive, whatever. If you kind of look all the way up like you're trying to run your hand under the dash, you'll see there's a little door up there. It's a little plastic pop-in. If you've ever changed the batteries on a TV remote yeah. or on your children's toys, it'll look really familiar to you. Or taking them out for peace and quiet. Yeah, well, we <laughs> don't talk about that too often. Um, <laughs> uh Take a coin or a key, and you can actually pop the door open. It's got the little slot in it. Once you pop that little piece of plastic out, and it's about, uh, let's say, three inches by about an inch and a half tall, uh, not going to hurt anything when you pop it out. You'll look in there, and you'll see some wires and cables and frayed carpet where it's cut. <laughs> but what you'll see is an orange or red loop of uh, like a pull tab. Yeah, like a ballistic nylon kind of thing. Yeah, and all you're supposed to do is kind of get that through your finger and pull. And you are going to have to pull hard. It's yeah. not easy. That's a very strong. And you have to pull, and you'll feel it go click. When you do that, the transmission is now in neutral. Yeah. And it will stay in neutral. This is the other thing that we Ron was laughing about. He said, yeah, we did it. And then we hopped in the Jeep and fired it up and put it in reverse, and it wouldn't back off the <laughs> ramp. <laughs> Whoops. Whoopsie. 
Crazy. <laughs> so uh, you do have to go in uh, when your Jeep is done. You know, it's loaded on the flatbed, hopefully not permanently, you know, or for whatever reason, uh, you have to reach back there, grab that cord, and give it another pretty strong pull and you'll feel it pop again when it and then it'll retract back in and you can snap the door so it's a simple little thing look it up in your manual go out and practice it a time or two in the in the parking lot or the garage before you need it yeah so you know how it works particularly if the jeep belongs to your spouse who is not a handy person you may want to at least give them a clue <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. that they have an idea. Uh, it's a real simple feature. It's designed to keep the Jeep from being left in neutral and driving, you know, rolling over you. Yeah. Uh, so it's actually a pretty good safety feature. But, you know, maybe you need to go out and figure out all the bits and pieces of your Jeep. Yeah, and that's one of the things that we talked about, uh, about reading the owner's manual. I didn't do anything. I, actually, I did. I read how many gallons of gas and, the, <laughs> and whether or not the transmission flush and all that. I read that. But that, that information's in there. And when Kevin called me and says, hey, did you hear about this thing? He's telling me as he's telling me the the crickets are going off. I'm going, oh, he's right. Because <laughs> I had the same problem with the charger. Hmm. Yep. You That's know, it's a good thing to know that. Easy. Well, yeah. one of the other things, too, on the Gladiator forums I'm seeing is the new TSB out for the steering box. Again, I'm still doing more research about that. But um, apparently it's got a dead spot, 30-degree dead spot. And you feel your Gladiator wandering on the highway. And so check into that. Call your dealership yeah, if you think it's uh, available. I mean, I guess it goes from an aluminum cast box to a steel box. At but least that's the current info that's being... Yeah. Being thrown around. We don't have any proof of that. There's no TSB that we found yet, but you know, the. Well, it is. If you Google it, the TSB information, I don't have the TSB number, but the, the idea is that if you feel that you've been wandering and been in a cave like I have, apparently this TSB has been around for a while, and I'm like, man, this thing just has a dead spot, you know, not again. And then all of a sudden I'm on the Gladiator page and Dora's like, did you see this TSB yet? I'm like, oh, that explains a lot. Yeah. So again, just something to check out. Check your local dealership and give them a call and say, hey, do I qualify? And the best to do it if you're thinking about planning on lifting your Jeep, do it before you buy the lift because they have been denying the uh, TSB on some of the lifted Jeeps. Mm, that's good to know. So. Uh, anyway, as far as the garage segment, we'll come back to that on another show. I will tell you, just as a teaser, that... Uh, this is an old issue that's cropped up on TJs for years. And, you know, of course, TJs are now two generations out of date. Yeah. But uh, there's a new twist on the gas tank uh, issue. And for those of you who don't drive TJs, uh, what there was is there's a uh, the rollover check valve in the top of the tank. Uh Apparently, wasn't real compatible with ethanol. Yeah. And the fuels swelled up and would get jammed. Well, it turns out there's a twist to it. Um, and I learned it the hard way. <laughs> Last time I was here, in fact. Yes, we talked about it. I came here and was like, I need gas. And I went to try and put gas in my TJ, and it wouldn't take any. It would take about a cup, and then it would cut off. And you'd put the handle again and go, and I'm going, this is, I, yeah, I got to get there, and I'm, I'm just, uh, and I had done the conversion to the flat valve, and I'll leave it at that. Um, but the ball apparently is now, as they've gotten even older, I looked it up, they're getting jammed at the top of the tank, blocking the inlet of fuel. Uh, if you leave them in like I was, they used to get jammed down at the bottom, causing their own little thing. Now mine's getting jammed at the top. So if I fill the tank up and drive around for a while, I can't put fuel in. <laughs> So, I didn't drive it today. <laughs> See, that's what just makes it easier. You just sit on your gas tank like you do in a CJ like this, and your fuel tank's right there. Yeah, this is true. Yes. No balls <laughs> in, in the tank. Yes. <laughs> we'll leave it at that. We'll leave it at that. But we'll, we'll talk about just how I'm going to fix that problem. The, yeah, that's yeah. the downside that a few soldiers had found out, too. <laughs> yes. That yes. wetness you felt after that last round of incoming fire was not, not you. you. <laughs> <laughs> may want to change uh, your okay pants. all right the, the, the mbc logo whatever that was a nice touch thank you john no that's the ott ott on the trail <laughs> oh he's my new favorite guest no that's applause a, just 20s i'll be here all week <laughs> try, try to be open yeah. <laughs> So, and as if you haven't figured that out, our Patreons can see it. Uh, John didn't go anywhere. He's been sitting here kind of giggling around at this kind of, yeah, well, you know, we all have Jeep issues. <laughs> yeah. But that's what makes it fun. That is what makes it fun. And so, annoying at the same time. <laughs> so at the moment, I do have an interesting question. Given the fact that you have, you know, your, your JK, mm -hmm. not a U, just a JK, mm -hmm. and now you've got your little willies. 
Uh, does the wife ever drive the Willys and make you drive the JK? She won't let me drive the JK right now. Ah. The fact that she actually had to take my car to go get the paint today Uh-oh. really bothered her because she really wanted to take her Jeep. That's all she likes to drive. She loves driving it. Mm. Yeah. But uh, I didn't want to move it and have to rearrange cars a thousand times. <laughs> so uh, the Jeep is in here. But I, I, I want to wheel it. She does not. It is a pavement princess for people out there. It's ready for the trail. Mm-hmm. It is uh, a TerraFlex leveling kit on there. That's all that is on it. Um, t- 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 everything else is the same. It's other than that, it's stock. I mean, besides the cut fenders and the hood and some paint details and stuff and custom stereo stuff inside. Of course, of yeah. course, of course, yeah. of course. Yeah. Gotta have your tune, man. Yeah, but other than that, it's it's just a normal JK, and it. I know it could crawl very easily, mm-hmm. but it's her vehicle, so I, and that's once again why I did the Willys. And, and I will say that my next vehicle will be the Gladiator. That's what we were just Scott and I were talking about. Mm-hmm. I've, mm-hmm. I've been wanting to do that, but of course, as payments are concerned, I have to get through my one-year-old vehicle now. Yep. And in three years or two years, I will get rid of that. And I'm hoping that they bring back the burnt umber, the burnt orange color. <laughs> The, mango the year tango. that I buy it, because I have always wanted a vehicle that was burnt orange, that kind of goldish, mango tango, orange, yeah. yeah, not not bright, not the pumpkin. Yeah, you know? no, 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 the mango tango was like a, um, almost like the the lid bucket, but like metallic. Yes, yes, correct. Yeah, yeah mango I, tango. I want to do that in the worst way, and then I'll have my fun working on that again. But the <laughs> idea is to take that, so that I can tow the boat, and behind the boat tow the other jeep. So wherever I go, I can have all my toys with me. I think you might need a little bit bigger of a trailer. I will take this and put it up in the boat. Ah. And then just pull the boat. Get, get, get yourself like a pontoon or a deck boat that you can... You definitely Perfect. need the max tow then. <laughs> It's either that or we'll have to figure out how to design you a little, one of those uh, two-part trailers. And I've actually seen yeah. these in Europe, that the boat actually goes on top and it's got a set of hydraulic arms that scissor it out and behind and down into the water. I'm liking this. Okay. I'm liking and then the Jeep just sits in a, a lowered flatbed section. And then when you, you motor up and you pull up onto it and it just kind of goes sit back up and in. And drips all down the Jeep so you I get think, in with wet seats. I think we have a new project coming up. <laughs> Somewhere there's a folded piece of leather in a dark place. Well, bits, bits of paper, probably some receipts and some plastic, like you know, rectangles with chips in them, and they're just sitting there hearing you say this, Kevin, in the ether of the universe, and going, "Why, why?" But you're his wallet. Yeah, I don't need a wallet. <laughs> Those parts are readily available on all the other broken down. You're Jeeps talking to the around. guy who somebody was complaining about, you know, not being able to dump shavings into a bin. And what? I built him a building that oh, the yeah. roof opened up like a... <laughs> Did you show you pictures like of the Muppet, the Muppet building? No. <laughs> the roof opens up, and I said, you got to put googly eyes on going, yum, 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 yum. Not, I'm not joking. It really lifts up on it the top does. of the That's roof. That's awesome. But that's the second one. The other one was the guy's planet, uh, was uh, observatory where the whole roof just rolls off and forms a patio outside. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like I said, these are big, big googly eyes, you know, I'm going, yum, yum, yum. Put like some cardboard fangs. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's so, for Halloween. Yeah. Back on to uh, the Jeep topics. What's next for the little green wonder? It's a good question. Oh, how much money you got? Enjoy uh, it. <laughs> actually, the, the the next thing after I figure out this little uh, drive shaft sound, yeah, without an extra couple pounds in the back of it, um, <laughs> I, I plan on getting this to some trail somewhere. I'm probably going to go up uh, around here. We, uh, I'm sure a lot of the listeners know of, of Citrus. Yeah, we've yeah. talked about yeah. it several times. The, the um, big and, sand pits. <laughs> and they have now created it. There is actually a, a Jeep badge for yeah, one of right. the trails that everyone around here has traveled a thousand times. <laughs> um, we're just used to that trail. Yeah. And I'm going to take it up there. I am going to have this as a 1951 modernly badged Jeep Proving the fact that you don't need lifts and lockers and everything Amen. to enjoy the experience Jeep of jeeping and with the no hydraulic anything, so <laughs> it's going to bounce around like this everywhere you go. That it does. So, and but the that's memories, okay. The memories are going to make are going to be great. And the cool thing is, I kind of thought about this before we took the break, and I wanted to say it because, in a way, you already have a badge of honor. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You, you took time and you you rolled up your sleeves and and did it. Open that's cool. your wallet. Yeah, well. Yeah. That, and and that's, the, that's the best part, though, because 
Most of the parts on this that, that I had with it, of course, I took out, sandblasted, regasketed, rebuilt the parts so that I didn't have to. Per I mean, that's part of the fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, to a lot of people, it's it's the small nitty gritty work and stuff. And you take parts off, and you're like, oh, I got to clean all the cow poop off this one. But when you're done and it's shiny, well, shiny-ish, <laughs> and, and it goes back in, but it works, mm -hmm. it feels amazing. I mean, there's so many parts of this Jeep that... Well, I saw your face when we finally hit the timing sweet spot today. Oh, it was wonderful. We, we were... Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I had to drag out a piece of antique test gear. Uh, <laughs> strobe light gun. <laughs> yeah, strobe light timing gun. And uh, we... Me sitting with the phone doing this with the light wasn't working. <laughs> I hey, just couldn't get it in time. I'm from that generation. I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, it was fantastic. No, no, it, it, it made it perfect. And you're sitting there and thinking, going... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and you got your carburetor adjusted too. Mm -hmm. And the cool thing about it is, Kevin and I always talk about this when people say, "Hey, you know, where should I go? Should I should I do my live? Should I build this? Should I do that?" And we always kind of say, you know, "Hey, if you have the ability and the the desire and the physical capabilities, always try and you know you have other people do a lifting party or work on your Jeep together because yes. you'll know how it goes together." Yep. Brother, you know how that comes together now. <laughs> yeah, I've, wa I've watched yes. you in several cases almost you know, loosening that distributor blind. <laughs> okay, and then going over here and, okay, this electrical line here. And, that, and you'll have that skill and ability when you hit the trail. You know, and, exactly. And, all that. and that, that was the most important thing to me was if there's a problem that happens, even on, even on the JKs and the JKUs when I worked on them, if there was something that happened, mm -hmm. whether I was out wheeling or somewhere, I wanted to know what the reason was it broke and yeah. if I can fix it when I'm on the trail. I, I, I'm sure you guys preach this all the time. Do not go on a trail unless you're with other people. Oh, yeah. Do, do not go alone. Mm -hmm. And I'll see posts all the time. Oh, I'm stuck at Citrus or I'm stuck at Hard Rock and someone come and get me. Why are you there alone? <laughs> this, yeah. is, this is not a highway. This is not a back road. This is a treacherous area of road that Jeep has even said, hey, <laughs> you can have a badge if you can make it through here. Has anyone ever heard of Moab? Yeah. Yes, that's the other places you get badges. So think. Don't, don't just go out there and go, hey, I'm only an hour away from everybody. An hour away from everybody can turn into 24 hours away sitting in a forest with bears and everything else. And yeah. mosquitoes. And mosquitoes. And they're big. They're huge. <laughs> Florida state bird. Yeah. I saw, yeah. A, I saw a mosquito carrying me a pelican the other day. <laughs> so, you know, we also got to see... Sure, was it a peacock? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. Uh, we got to do something about you, though. We've got to get you some... some uh, I think he'd look good dressed as Hawkeye Pierce, don't you? When he's oh, out. Oh, wouldn't that be fun? Get you, you know... What, what, you just got up like Radar O'Reilly. I'm more O'Reilly. of a honey cut, though. I'd not you know, be, well, with yeah. the comments. <laughs> hold, hold on. See, I'll even put the glasses on and become Radar. That's fine with me. <laughs> the, the only thing that kills me is that we, Kim and I talked about this the last time we did the Broncos show a few, few shows back, and you talked about Parnelli Jones. I see him going through there like Parnelli Jones inside the, uh, the Yeah, Jeep. but, but that's a, that was a Bronco. That, <laughs> yeah, I know. That was Big Ollie. <laughs> But, uh, no, I just, I think he would, you know, that, that whole Vietnam era, you know, uh, not Vietnam, I'm sorry, uh, uh, Korean, Korean War, Korean yeah. War where, where this, this model Jeep was really in, yeah. in high usage there. You know, we could put the stretcher across and, you know. Yep. <laughs> well, my goal was, so when I, when I got this. See if your wife will dress up as Hot Lips Houlihan? Right. <laughs> sure. Okay. <laughs> you know, I know the references and I know the names and I almost did a faux pas. I said, well, who's going to dress up like the Klingon? And then I realized it's, it's a Klinger, right? Klinger. Klinger. Yes. 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 I can't say or deny or anything that I haven't done that before. Um, so. Hey, wait, 20 bucks is 20 bucks, man. <laughs> exactly. Right? You Jeep parts are expensive. You, you gotta buy I was going to say, I wish I could sing. I'd start with Suicide is Painless right now. <laughs> so. So. <laughs> Brings on many changes. <laughs> oh, I, I am leaving that in, guys. But I can take it or leave it if I please. <laughs> the one, the one goal that that I did have with this Jeep when you asked that before, and I know yeah. it was a while ago, but um, I told you my dad had come and helped work yeah. on it, and Riley was in here, and you know, it was the three generations. I promised my dad back in February that I would have this up and running and be at his house, which is ten miles down down the road here on the 4th of July mm -hmm. to take him for a ride. Yeah. He, he was not a military man. He was a teacher. Yeah. Um, where, you know, a lot of his friends were and, and we all grew up in that whole vein. Yeah. And I showed up without him knowing on the 3rd of July. 
with the Jeep. Got him in it, and he's going to be 80 this year. And we went for a nice long ride, just out and around Land O'Lakes and came back. And the grin on both of our faces when we were done was, it, it makes it all worth it, you know? Yeah. So. That's absolutely fantastic. Yeah. That's cool. So man. if you get a chance, do it. I mean, seriously, what do you have to lose? If you break apart, hello, just get another one. If the ball bearings fall out <laughs> of the they're, steering. They're, yeah, they're, right. It's, it's not get that a expensive. Get and chase them. <laughs> I, I don't even mind saying this. I have spent less than $2,500 fixing this Jeep. Wow. And I have brand new suspension, brakes, brake lines, electronics, parts of the engine that are redone, all the body work that I did, brand new tires, uh, uh, the radio system, which is probably the most expensive part of everything, all that together, that's all I've spent on that. $2,500 to just buy you a lift on a JK. Exactly. Not installed. Just the lift. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, anything else you want to close with our fine guest? No, I, I, I that's, uh, I mean, again, I, this man. Is, I can't tell you. Thank I'm you forward, enough. dude. This is oh, been thank you. a you, great I mean, show. It's been awesome to, to for the help that you've given, and I'm glad that you are now coming by so that you can see the majesty of the madness of, well, you already work with them all the time, so you know, but uh, it, it, it's great to, to deal with people that, are very involved, not just in a one community in one town, but the whole world of Jeeps. Yeah, and and it's been a great help for me and a joy at the same time, and I do appreciate it very much. Well, you're most welcome. But I have really enjoyed getting back and utilizing skills that I learned as a kid. Mm-hmm. You know, and uh, as I've said before, I started on old flat fenders with magneto ignitions and stuff like that that my dad would bring home in pieces and say, "Here." Here's a challenge for have you. Have fun. You know? Have fun. So, uh, and to come out here, and, and this just reminded me of so many of them. I still love the, the one Jeep that was Ron's house five years ago that nobody could get started. And I walked out there and went, hmm, crank it. Put my hand over the carburetor and blocked it to, to hard choke it to pull fuel up to it. And the thing roared to life and turned Okay, what's next? And they were all like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> It's not the kick. It's knowing where, where to yeah. kick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, my foot's sore. <laughs> <laughs> well, if that's all we got, uh, I think it's about time for us to wrap up the show, don't you? I think it is. And again, John, thank you very much, man. You've been nothing but good to us. And coming over today was a hoot. I'm hoping I'm allowed to come back and we can just Anytime. shoot the breeze and just talk Jeeps or whatever, man, because yeah. this is this is awesome, man. Oh, Anytime, this is and awesome. I appreciate it. You're a heck of a guy, dude. The world needs more like you and Kevin. <laughs> All right, 20 later. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I forget that whole image thing, you know. Hello. It takes a lot to create this stuff. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Duh. If anybody would know. <laughs> That's like a Only man I know. <laughs> only man I know who has a bottle of whiskey named after him. <laughs> you don't even know that. No, do I you? didn't know that. That'll be a story for another day. That's this is a family show brought to you by... <laughs> Ah, non sponsored. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, as we always say, I think we've done enough damage here. It's uh, time to lock hubs, put her in four low, and hit the trail. Yeah, right. And as always, be sure to wheel legal, tread lightly, and also don't forget to check out our Patreon page. Right. And as we always ask you, please take nothing but pictures, memories, and of course, your trash when you leave the trail. We exactly. want to leave it there for our kids. Yep. All right. John, thanks again. Thank you. Thank you, John. Bye now. Bye. Bye, Patreons. Battery is going to be-